Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free only review for this book, As Far As You'll Take Me, uh, Forgive the Glare, by Phil Stamper. But before I get into the spoiler-free review of this book, I do want to backtrack a little bit because... I have been eagerly anticipating this book for a very long time, so it's only fair that you guys kind of understand how it came to be that I learned of this book, that I learned of this author, and all that before I go into how it actually went for me when it came time to reading it. So in August of 2020, during the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, I had gotten to a point where I wanted to start borrowing books from my library, but obviously with COVID going on, that just wasn't an option. My library then ended up coming up with this deal, I guess, that if you sent them an email with genres of books that you like, then they'll send you out one book a fortnight. I was kind of blown away, and I will insert an image somewhere up there from the video that I'm referring to. I was rather blown away because I ended up receiving a box full of books. I think I received about 20 books when I originally was just signing up for one. But in amongst those books, one of the books that I received from my library was this book, The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. This is not the exact book that I received. In fact, I received a paperback and I have purchased a hardback, but the story was The Gravity of Us. I was very intrigued by this one because I could tell just by looking at the cover that it was an LGBTIQ plus book. And back then, I realised that I hadn't read a lot of LGBTIQ plus books since being on this channel, and that's something that I wanted to promote a lot more of, being a part of the LGBTIQ plus community. Eventually, I found a way to work this book into my August TBR. It was not originally on the TBR, but I think within a week of August, I found a way to shove it onto the TBR somewhere. I did not regret it for a second. I thought that this book was absolutely amazing. Phil Stampard did not only an amazing job with the plot and the characters and just the execution of this book was just so good that I came to fully, wholly and completely trust Phil Stamper as an author. I then went on subsequently to do research on Phil Stamper because of how much I loved this book and I loved his work. I wanted to read another one of his books, but lo and behold, this was the only book that Phil Stamper had published at that time. However, there was talk of another book coming out, and that book was, yep, you guessed it, as far as you'll take me. I knew after I'd read The Gravity of Us that as far as you'll take me uh, was on the way and it would come in at some point. As the remainder of 2020 went along, there was uh, speculation here and there. I even spoke to a couple of different bookstores that the release date for this book was going to be held back. Now, for those of you who don't know, the, this book, As Far As You'll Take Me by Phil Stamper, was originally scheduled to be published in February, but what I was being told by my sources was that the published date had been pushed back to May because of everything that had been going on with COVID. I kind of just stepped away from my obsession with this book. Like, if you go back and look at my videos from August all the way up through to December, I mention this book as many times as I can, how excited I am, how much I'm eagerly anticipating the release of this book, but then ultimately saying it's been pushed back until May. I then got to a point in March where I saw that other people were reviewing this book and I thought, are you kidding me? Did they get advanced reader copies? But no, 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 no. Maybe wires were crossed with bookstores I was talking to or whatever it was, but this book, as far as you'll take me, was released on the scheduled published, uh, the scheduled date for it to be published in February. I worked incredibly hard to purchase this book and get it sent to me, and now here it is in my hands. And finally, over the course of the last couple of days, I finally got to read this book. Okay, so apparently my camera's lighting is having issues with me just holding the book up. The lighting is getting incredibly dark just by just by holding it up, as you can see. So I'm going to put a picture of it up there, just so that the lighting isn't affected. I received the book, and I was so ready to jump in and start reading this book. One thing that I have maintained from uh, August, when I'd read The Gravity of Us all the way through to finally purchasing the book, was that I didn't want to know anything about this book at all. I wanted to go in completely blind, because that's how much I 100% fully, wholly, and completely trusted Phil Stamper. I'm going to open up 
uh, with an overview of my response to this book in a spoiler-free way. And the overview uh, that I want to give you guys is that I was not disappointed. It was an amazing read, and I really did enjoy my time with this book. However, there were some cons that I did find within the book that I will discuss with you guys, and I also do want to make some comparisons to The Gravity of Us. Now, for those of you who are not aware about either The Gravity of Us or As Far As You'll Take Me, The Gravity of Us is a standalone book, as is As Far As You'll Take Me. These are not two books in one series. They are two completely separate books. Uh, and the only thing that they really do have in common is that they're both LGBTIQ plus books. They both revolve around a protagonist who is gay, and there are issues that come up to do with that, something to do with that, which are very different in both books, but there are issues to, that come up to do with being young and being gay and, you know, traversing in a world where being gay is a minority and having to deal with all of those things. So there is that similarity with both of these books, but aside from that, these two books are completely different. And I just want to take a moment to quickly go into some of the differences that you'll find with The Gravity of Us as well as As Far As You'll Take Me in order to assist you in case you haven't read either of these books or in case you have read The Gravity of Us and you're wondering uh, whether As Far As You'll Take Me is the right book for you. Okay, so now I'm going to do some fancy schmancy editing. Over here, we're going to continue to have As Far As You'll Take Me and over here, I'm going to place an image of The Gravity of Us so I can make the comparisons between the two. Let's start off with a very quick premise. The Gravity of Us is a book that revolves around a boy who is a massive um, multimedia, social media mogul, if you will, even though he's only a child. He is being offered all of these different things to help him, to assist him to continue to grow as uh, someone who is just very successful in the media industry, even though he's so young. But his father, who uh, has applied for a job with NASA, receives this job, and so the whole family is uprooted from where they live to a completely different state. The, our character has to kind of traverse living in this compound area where his father trains and they've kind of made a reality show out of it and different things like that. He's also exploring his sexuality but he's at the same time kind of had to leave the career that he was starting to build up in his home state behind. There were a lot of uh, LGBTIQ plus issues that came up in the book and I found it to be a very enjoyable book. The basic premise of this book is that we are following a boy who lives in Texas and he ends up at the beginning of the book traveling to England because he is an oboist. He is someone who loves to play the oboe and he wants to be a part of, I believe, the London Symphonic Orchestra. He goes over to England to try and make a living with his musical talent that he has. While he is there, he encounters a boy, a lot of different issues do unfold, and that is where Phil Stamper can really kind of, you know, take the reins and do what he does best, in my opinion, which is to really unpack all of these different, very complex issues and keep them very raw and real, and he just does that very masterfully, as he does with The Gravity of Us. The Gravity of Us is a very fast-paced book that really does hit the ground running. We learn the backstory of our protagonist within the first chapter. We know everything we need to know about him. We know that he is gay, we know that he is successful with his social media stuff that he is doing, we know that he's been offered an internship, we know that he has a friend, uh, uh, he has one girlfriend who he's very fiercely loyal to, and that things are just going really well for him, and then his life is turned upside down, and then we start following him having to traverse everything he has to traverse without having everything that he had built his life towards. As far as you'll take me, it is nowhere near as fast paced. We start off in the present with our protagonist travelling over to London, and we don't know much other than the fact that he wants to try and get a career being the oboist that he is, someone who plays the oboe, and that he aspires to be a part of the Lon London Symphony Orchestra. We don't know much at all about him other than that. We come to find out very slowly but surely that he has auditioned for a very prestigious musical school in London. He did that a year ago, and he didn't get in, but we don't know why. And there are little teasing moments that occur throughout the book where we realise that something happened, and that... Thing that happened caused him not to get in, but we don't find out what that is until right towards, well actually right in the last couple of chapters of the book. So 
we don't learn everything about our protagonist off the bat, and a lot of the stuff that we do learn about our protagonist that has shaped him to who he became once he stepped off the plane in London uh, in the present, so in chapter one, we kind of learn all that throughout the course of the book, whereas with The Gravity of Us, we know everything up front. Because of this, As Far As You Take Me is a much slower paced book, and it is a a slower, more sustainable burn, if you will. Phil Stamper really seems to take his time for us, uh, with us when it comes to us getting to know the multiple layers that exist within our protagonist, as well as everything that's going on in his new life now that he has travelled over to London. We get to meet his cousin, who he ends up staying with, and but we don't really know much about his cousin really. We, we just know surface level stuff. Then through his cousin, our protagonist ends up meeting his cousin's friends and becomes friends with his cousin's friends, and we're still trying to unpack things about him. When it comes to the emotionally impactful, raw and real moments with these contemporary LGBTIQ plus issues that occur in both of these books. The Gravity of Us, because it is so much faster paced, we deal with those issues much sooner than we do with As Far As You'll Take Me. But the pro with As Far As You'll Take Me, with it being a slow burn, because of this, the payoff is much better with As Far As You'll Take Me, because at least for me as the reader, I was so much more invested in what was going on with our protagonist once all these tough things started to come out of the woodwork that he had to face and deal with and go through, that it really got to me. You know, books seldom fully affect me to this point, but this one did because Phil Stamper mastered exactly when he needed to bring these issues out of the woodwork. He got us to a point where we were so fully invested in our protagonist that now is the time to kind of rip the rug out from under you and expose you to all the raw and real things that he is going through. So I was just so much more invested in it. All right, I'm now going to get rid of this image (laughs) and focus on this book. We'll start with the cons, and obviously my first con is that it is a slow-paced book to begin with. While we know certain things, it's, you kind of, when you're reading this, feel like you know half of what is going on with our protagonist. I feel like I, I felt like I half knew Marty. We learned things about him on a surface level, and then we learned things about how he's feeling in this moment. There is a whole other part of his life that we just don't know. I do feel that that was a bit of a con for me, because I felt like we continue to receive more new, new, new information, and yet there was other stuff that just wasn't coming up, that we weren't learning yet. And so for me, that was a bit of a con. My second con with As Far As You'll Take Me would have to be how long it took to get to the point of the emotional realness and rawness. Now, don't get me wrong. As I was saying earlier, and I will stand by that, coming to the end of the book, having read the entire thing. I can see why Phil Stamper took so long to get to the point of where he's dealing with these emotional, real and raw issues. I do get that. But the con more occurs when you're reading the book. For me, up until the halfway mark, I'm reading this book thinking, I don't get this. It doesn't read like a Phil Stamper book. I didn't think there was anything necessarily wrong with the plot. The plot was fine. But while you're reading, or well, uh, while I'm reading the book, I can't help but think, this is a very easy, surface level read, it just, it's not what made me fall in love with Phil Stamper. My third and final con for this book is definitely subjective and it is a personal opinion, and that is that there is a trope that comes up. I can't say much about specifics because it will be a spoiler, but... The trope I'm referring to, just so you know what I'm talking about here, is the church having issues with people being gay. For me personally, I'm just kind of over it, honestly. (laughs) Um, 
I get it. I do. It is something that very much exists. As a member of the LGBTIQ plus community, I can't say that every single person who is religious out there has an issue with people that are gay, but at the same time, it is something that does exist out there. It is something that does need to be talked about in some way, shape, or form. But just for me, I'm kind of over it. I'm kind of sick of that trope because I just read about it all the time that for me, it's kind of becoming a bit of a cliche. My first pro for as far as you'll take me is Phil Stamper. Look, I've said some things with the con section, and I've said some things in comparison to the gravity of us, but I tell you what, from the moment I started reading the second half of the book, everything just clicked. And that's when I got to the point of saying, yep, yeah, this is Phil Stamper. Now I'm reading a Phil Stamper work. Something comes out of the woodwork that we need to deal with, and Phil Stamper does not just brush over it. He deals with it. He goes so beneath surface level, and he is so raw and real and exposed in the way that he deals with what he deals with. He's not afraid to go there, and I really, really appreciate that. I still very much admire Phil Stamper as an author for what he does for the LGBTIQ plus community in not writing a book through rose-coloured glasses. Because growing up as a gay man, you know, as a gay boy and turning into a gay man, I definitely have to say that it's not an easy experience. And so if I am to come across an LGBTIQ plus book where our protagonist is gay and just has the easiest life in the world, it's gonna kind of get to me a little bit because it's not real. My second pro is the way that Marty handles everything, and I guess his character arc, because it's a standalone, his character arc only exists in the one book that we have, from where he was at the beginning of the book, all the way through to where he ends up by the end of the book. I really appreciated that. And my final pro for this book would have to be the cultural differences that Marty experiences between him when he's in Texas, and when we go through the then- uh, side of the dual perspective with this book, the them perspective, and find out how life was for him when he was growing up in Texas with his parents and, and with the culture over there. I'm not saying this is how Texas is, it's just in this world, that in this world of this book, that's how Texas is. And his experiences there versus his experiences he goes through once he gets to London. I just really appreciated where he was coming from because of the experiences he had growing up versus what he was going into, it was very much a massive shock for him to to go through everything he went through in London. And I just really appreciated the way that Phil Stamper went about writing the shocking aspects of the cultural dynamics because I'm, I can't spoil this, but I will say this much. I'm usually used to the cultural dynamics being the other way around compared to the way that it's written in this book. So I loved that. It was, yeah, very much turning things around. So I appreciated that. All in all, I did think long and hard about what I am going to give this book, and I think ultimately the second half of the book outweighs the first half by a mile, to the point that it more than makes up for the first half, and because of that, and in retrospect when I go back and think about everything, the, from page one all the way through to the end, and I can see now in retrospect how the first half needed to be how the first half was, I can still confidently walk away giving this book five stars. I definitely think it deserves it. Phil Stamper is just an amazing writer, and I so appreciate what he has done uh, as far as authors are concerned for the LGBTIQ plus community. Adam Silvera gets a ton of attention, but I feel like Phil Stamper deserves just as much attention as Adam Silvera. So if you have not picked up either of his books, The Gravity of Us, or As Far As You'll Take Me, I definitely recommend picking up either of them. I think As Far As You'll Take Me will emotionally affect you more if you're anything like me than The Gravity of Us will. I think The Gravity of Us might be more of a fun read, though, so it really depends on what you're going for. If you know what you're getting yourself into, which is an LG for either book, which is an LGBTIQ plus journey where you're going to follow a protagonist who is gay and at some point you're going to be dealing with some raw, real, hard, contemporary issues that 
people of the LGBTIQ plus community go through, if you can understand that and appreciate that before you go in, I think you're going to come out of either of these books, but particularly as far as you'll take me, all the better for it. Alright, so that's where I'm going to leave it. Five stars for me. I absolutely loved it, and oh my goodness. I mean, now I'm going to be obsessing about Phil Stamper's new book. I don't know what his next one's going to be, but uh, best believe when it starts getting promoted, I'm going to be putting the word out as well. I post videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I'll see you again soon. Mwah. Thank you so, so, so much for watching, and happy reading!